complex number manipulation for circuit analysis. Even though there are calculators and scientific programs that manipulate imaginary numbers uh, for us seamlessly, for the kinds of questions we'll be doing on our exams, we need to be able to add and subtract, multiply, and divide complex numbers just using simple trigonometric functions. The adding and subtracting of imaginary numbers, it's really best done in Cartesian coordinates because all we have to do is add the real to the real, add the imaginary to the imaginary, or subtract the imaginary from the imaginary and the uh, real from the real. Multiplying and dividing complex numbers is best done with angle notation or polar coordinates. First, you have to convert the Cartesian to polar, find the magnitude, find the angle or phase. And just a quick review, the magnitude is the real squared plus the imaginary squared. Then all you need to do is find the angle by taking the arctangent of the imaginary over the real. However, a calculator won't give you necessarily the right answer. Um, sometimes you have to adjust it by 180 or minus 180. Um, or 90 or minus 90, depending on what quadrant that you're in. A quick example. We have all four quadrants represented by uh, four imaginary numbers. You can go through the notes and just verify that for yourself. But something to keep in mind is that on the imaginary part, the J isn't there. So it's really minus four squared so that you get a positive 16, not minus four J squared, right? The J is stripped out for that manipulation. And then we just find the various phase angles from here. Multiply and then divide as needed. In angle notation, you just multiply the magnitude by the magnitude, in this case, a magnitude of 10 times a magnitude of one equals a magnitude of 10. And subtract, uh, add or subtract the degrees. In this case, since we're multiplying, we'll add 20 degrees to two degrees for 22 degrees. For divide, you divide the magnitude. So a magnitude of 1 divided by a magnitude of 10 is a magnitude of 0.1. We now subtract the phase. So we take 20 away from 2 and we get minus 18. Let's use this for a circuit example. Now I want to find the voltage at node 1. And this is a current source. Well, really, we just need to find the Z equivalent, which happens to be this capacitance in parallel with that resistance, and multiply it by the current. Well, what is the equivalent impedance of the two parallel impedances? Well, we can use uh, this form. We have one over the impedance of the capacitor, one over the impedance of the resistor. Just a quick calculation. The impedance of the capacitor at that frequency is minus 50 J ohms, and the impedance of the resistor is 50 ohms. So we take the Z equivalent. It's 1 over 0.02 J ohms plus 0.02 ohms. So even though it's a little, um, usually we put the real before the imaginary. This is the real part. That's the imaginary part. Well, we now need to divide this. So we just convert that into polar. One is a magnitude of one with no phase, uh, zero phase angle. And you can see that since the, these are equal and pointing in the same direction, we're gonna get 45 degrees. And we just have to multiply that by the square root of two. But then when we divide everything out, we get 50 divided by the square root of 2 minus 45 degrees. V1 now is just 1 amp at 0 degrees times the equivalent impedance. And so now for our voltage, we get 50 divided by the square root of 2 volts at an angle of 45. 
And just as a refresher, if you need to convert back to Cartesian, the real part is the magnitude times the cosine. And in this case is 25 volts. And the imaginary part is the magnitude times the sine, which is minus 25 volts, which makes sense because at an angle of minus 45, you're in quadrant four. The complete way to describe V1 is 25 minus 25J, and you can put the units 